What's good people? With another 2K, we got another batch of new 2K gamers in our midst. So with this video, I'm gonna go over some basic things you should know when you hit the hardwood in NBA 2K22 on current and next gen consoles. So all right, let's get it. First off, you ever find yourself in an ugly matchup due to a fast break or multiple players in the same area and your point guard somehow is switched on to their center. You can fix this by holding X on PlayStation or A on Xbox and that player will switch assignments with the nearest defender. This can get you out of some unwanted situations to avoid terrible matchups against you. And if you go into your offensive settings and then visual feedback settings and down to team communication, you can set this to defense only and when you manually switch, you will see the players communicate the call above their head so you know who you're switching with. Probably the easiest way in five versus five modes for you to generate points is attacking the offensive boards and immediately going for the putback. When your player is going for the offensive rebound or in range to grab it, you're gonna hit square or X on your controller and he will attempt a putback that you will make 99.9% .9 of the time. This saves you from the times when you grab the offensive board, bring it down, then miss it or get blocked because the defender recovered. Now knowing this, you can set up situations where you can get easy putback opportunities. Let's say you're driving off a pick and roll or in general attacking the paint with your big near the hoop. You can get an easy rebound opportunity, get in the computer or use it to come up and try to defend your shot, leaving your big underneath the hoop for an easy two points. Next up, you want to find the right freelance or plays in your playbook for you to run almost immediately. Going into a match and freestyle the majority of the game is fun, but when you really need a bucket, it will be nice to know you have this play you've been working on in your back pocket or operating out of this specific freelance that will help you avoid running into teammates, messing up the space, then getting the ball stolen from you. Having a nice set of plays to go to when you need it most can help calm your nerves in tense situations and can raise your win percentage while you're improving on the other parts of your game. Hitting right on the D-pad in game and then freelances will give you access to your four freelances to choose from, where you can select which four you want as options in your coach settings. While hitting L, B, or L on your controller, then the last option positional play calling, and then the player's corresponding button will give you access to a slew of plays designed to get that specific player open. The first four options being very basic plays you could do with that player and hitting left or right triggers gets you into the team's playbook and plays for that guy. Some players will only be able to run a certain type of play, so they might not have as many pages to play with as someone like a Damian Lillard. Be sure to be quick with this or you will find yourself fighting against the clock as well as the defense. You can go through the playbook screen in the roster menu or practice each team's plays in a dedicated mode to get an idea of which each team's playbook has to offer. If you even want to just grab their playbook for use in my team. Now you might have a few plays you like to run but now it's time to learn how to access them even faster. And that's where favorite plays step in. One of the best features in recent years was the ability to set up your go-to plays as your favorite plays, so it would take two or three button presses and bam, you're running it. And without touching anything, your favorite plays will be things like ISO, floppy, and six others of that type. But you can change them by going into your game plane in the pause menu, then down to offensive settings, and then down to play selection. On next gen, I like that you can set this for the starting five and bench guys, so they have their own set of favorite plays. And for the bench plays to trigger your lineup on the court can have more than two players from your starting lineup in it and vice versa. From here on the right is your default eight favorite plays like I mentioned, quick ISO, give and go, post up, yada yada. Now if you hit X or A to edit plays, you can remove every single one if you want. But what I'm gonna do is add my favorite go-to plays so they're set up as my favorite plays by hitting X or A and scrolling down until I'm in my team's playbook. And from here, you can pick eight plays to set. So next time you come up the court, the biggest difference is here. If you're on current gen, you hit LB or L1 in your controller, and all your favorite plays are there. It will take you two button presses if your play is on the first page, and three button presses total if it's on the second. Where on next gen is totally different. You hit left on the D-pad to bring up your favorite plays, but you have to manually scroll through each play to then hit X or A or controller to select it. So I would suggest having your best plays go in order from your favorite to least favorite to save time. But sadly, it's still way faster than selecting a player mid-game and scrolling through his plays, then scrolling down and selecting a play to run. I wish they changed this. Now to make sure your go-to play is going to who you want only, you can assign plays to a specific player by highlighting the play and hitting triangle or Y on your controller and assign it to anybody in your starting five or bench. 
to guarantee they get that play despite it not necessarily being called for them. Another tip you must know is while breaking out a defender or trying to execute a fast break three, it's hard sometimes to settle down for a split second to set your feet for a standstill shot. And instead, you would attempt some off-balance leaner that you weren't expecting. So you must know how to have your player come to a quick stop. There's a few methods for it, but to keep things simple, one way is while moving with your player while holding turbo, tap the left trigger and then let go of the left stick. If done right, your player will be put into a position to quickly rise up and shoot eliminating the chance of you shooting some off-balance shot that you weren't expecting. Now let's talk about having patience when you defend. You want to make putting the ball in the basket as hard as you can on your opponent. So why are you jumping at any and everything under the sun? 2K22 has placed a big focus on rewarded defending properly and not allowing guys to consistently shoot like Steph Curry on 50% contested. So this means every shot they take, you want to be there in their face altering stuff, not in the air with them. Otherwise, you will quickly notice a lot of your guys are either in foul trouble because you opened a clear lane to the hoop, your opponent isn't missing any wide open shots because you're jumping everywhere, or both. Instead of going for blocks every time, start thinking about contesting shots as well. You do this by holding the right stick up while you're moving so your hand is always up and ready to contest, or flick it up to have your defender jump out at the shooter in the contested animation when they're further away. Adopting this type of approach, you will see a positive outcome in their shooting percentages as you're jumping less, but making it that much harder for your opponent. Next is when you're on defense to guard the lines as best you can, and on offense to get to this spot before the defense does. When dribbling at defending, this has helped me a ton. If the ball handler beats the defender to the line, he is now in the paint, and this is when he can start to break down the defense, trigger fouls, and kickouts. So you want to do your best to make sure when the defender is out of position to be ready to pounce. And as a defender, you're always ready to block them off before that happens. Getting familiar to these necessary spots on the floor, anticipating this is where they need to go, or where you need to go will help you react faster when a situation calls for it to attack or defend. Instead of taking an extra dribble when a defender is clearly out of position or when a defender is blocking the line early, you can appropriately counter off of that. And on defense, it can even give you a key to know when the ball handler has officially beat you so you now know it's time to sprint. Now I'm sure you've seen by now that 2K22 heavily rewards you for shooting wide open shots by making you almost unstoppable when you're open. So you really got to fight the frustration that may come over you during the game if your shots aren't hitting or not getting the ball for a while in park at a wreck and still trying to generate as many high IQ shots as possible. It's nice when badges carry us through a bad, I'm shooting this regardless possession, but you don't want your shot selection to suffer because of it. So you constantly have to be aware of where defenders are and think, okay, what are they probably going to do next? To then judge if you should pull the trigger on shots or not. Now this carries across every single mode in 2K22 and it's the fact that you have to know your player's jump shot. If you're a ball handler, practice shooting in different situations that you might encounter in a game. So you will have supreme confidence once it's game time that you know you're going to hit it. Try out a bunch and whatever you find most comfortable that you're also successful with, get as many reps as possible everywhere on the court with it. If you're shooting crazy with some player on my team, heck, steal his jump shot even. And lastly, the thing you must master on offense first is having a dangerous pick and roll game. It's the easiest way to break down the defense and get shots for yourself and your teammates. And being a legit threat, using this will make your successful offense a lot easier. As a call for a pick and roll, you can hold L1 or LB on your controller until you see the pick and roll icon above their head. And whoever is closer between your power forward and center will come over to you to set it. Now what if you want to pick who you want to set the screen for you? You could do that too. And you do it by tapping L1 or LB and hold the corresponding icon above the player's head you want until he starts to move towards you. So if you want to run a pick and roll with Dame and CJ, you can run a pick and roll with Dame and CJ by manually calling for one. Now you can get tricky with it and you can have them slip to the hoop by clicking LB or L1 in your controller before they set the screen. And they will roll to the rim. This is used if you notice the hedge defender leaving a wide open lane to the basket as they try to defend the pick and roll. You can also change the type of screen you're getting or switch the side they're going to set by firstly holding whoever you're calling over to set the screen for you button all the way through. And to change the type of screen you're getting by default, your screen may will roll to the hoop. But to change it to a pick and fade, you hit R1 or RB in your controller. And don't worry if you hit it by accident, you can switch it back. And to switch the side they set up at, you click in the left stick on your controller. 
So, all right, sports gamers, do you agree with the list? And if not, what's something that you think new 2K gamers should know when they first boot up? Leave it in the comments down below. And stay tuned here at Sports Gamers Online for more NBA 2K22 content. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And once you're with us, hit that bell icon at the bottom so you don't miss anything we put out. All right, people, I'm Chris. Thank you all for watching. And be good, y'all.